Putin clearly started this. He appears to be testing the U.S. government and the international community to see what he can get away with. He's got 175,000 troops massed on the border with Ukraine. What is the right way for the U.S. government to be handling this? Joining us now is Fiona Hill. She was the top Russia expert on the National Security Council under President Trump from 2017 to 2019. She's also recently the author of There Is Nothing For You Here, Finding Opportunity in the 21st Century. Dr. Hill, it is a real pleasure to have you back on the show. Thanks for making time to be here tonight. Thanks so much, Rachel. Great to be with you. Let me ask you if I'm framing this the right way. It seems to me from just a layman's perspective that um, President Putin has the world's attention, and he got one-on-one -on -one attention from the president of the United States today, and he's got the whole world guessing as to whether or not he's going to do something else crazy militarily toward Ukraine. Um, but he seems to be enjoying um, and, and have been seeking the attention that he got from it. Is that fair to portray it that way? Well, look, he certainly does want to get attention, uh, but he wants attention for a particular purpose. Putin has been signaling for quite some period of time, going back over um, several administrations, in fact, that he wants to see some kind of new security arrangement in Europe. And Ukraine is part of that. In many respects, you know, we're coming up this month to the 30th anniversary of the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the end of the Cold War, definitively 30 years of independence of Ukraine and other countries like Ukraine that were once part of the Soviet Union. And Putin's basically saying, look, we didn't really solve the end of the Cold War. At the end of other wars, we had a settlement in which there was an agreement about how Europe would be divided up. And I want that agreement now. They've been, as I said, he's been signaling it for many years beforehand over uh, different presidencies. And this is the latest iteration of this. How does threatening Ukraine militarily, occupying parts of Ukraine, seizing parts of Ukraine for, uh, for Russia, uh, threatening to do even more of that now, how does that factor into that strategic goal that he has? Well, Ukraine's a critical part of this. Putin has signaled many times, including quite recently in a major speech, that he considers Ukraine to be part of Russia, essentially as an extension of Russia. He said that the Ukrainian and Russian people are one and the same, uh, that Ukraine belongs with Russia, Ukraine is in Russia's sphere of influence. And so Ukraine needs to be part of this disposition of a new European security arrangement. Now, the problem is, of course, that he's demanding that President Biden, as he has for previous presidents in the United States, sit down and basically thrash this out. And obviously, he's hoping that today's uh, teleconference was part of that process. In terms of the balance of interests here, if, as you say, he considers Ukraine to be integrally part of Russia, something that even spiritually cannot be separated from Russia, that Ukraine is his, that Ukraine and Russia must be one. The United States looks at Ukraine as an ally, but doesn't have nearly the same emotional connection or strategic connection to Ukraine that Russia does. It's just an imbalance of power there. Putin understands that. Is he testing how far the United States and our allies will go to defend Ukraine? Um, I mean, obviously, the United States is not going to go to war with Russia in order to defend Ukraine. Everybody keeps saying that up and down. But short of war, the United States presumably has, has more options than we have exercised in the past. Is this an effort to flush out what those might be? And do you sense that the Biden administration might be willing to do things that haven't been done before in order to dissuade this kind of aggression? Well, look, you're absolutely right, Rachel. You framed it in exactly the right way. Um, this is what uh, Putin's doing. He's probing and he's testing. He's making it very clear that if he decides it's necessary, and of course he's going to keep us guessing about whether he's made that kind of decision, that he is poised to do maximal damage to Ukraine. I mean, the kind of forces that we see arrayed there, and there's a lot of this available, this information from public uh, satellite imagery, for example, you know, we can see that he might be poised to for a major invasion of Ukraine. And that's exactly the goal. He's trying to kind of push into thinking that he would do this. And again, uh, we have to treat it very seriously because he's done things like this in the past. As you say, he's already annexed Crimea. He's already moved into other parts of Ukraine, to the Donbass region. And I was trying to see, uh, are we ready to acquiesce in this? And I think that what President Biden has done today, as you laid it out, with all of these repeated phone calls to allies, is showing that the United States and its allies, which is the only way that we can frame this, is very serious in resisting it. Again, Ukraine's been an independent country for 30 years. Ukraine has agency here. It has uh, sovereignty. 
And the United States is not in any kind of position to basically bargain away Europe uh, on Ukraine's security. So the Biden administration is certainly uh, framing things in uh, the way that one would expect and hope and anticipate in responding to this. Fiona Hill, former top Russia expert on the National Security Council, the author of There Is Nothing For You Here, Finding Opportunity in the 21st Century, um, which of every book written by anybody associated with the Trump administration in any way is absolutely the one to read. Um, Dr. Hill, thank you very much for your time and your insight tonight. It's a real honor to have you here. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you.